What's going on, guys? Hey, this is Pastor Dakota from Ottawa Bible Church. I just want to continue in today's devotional series today in the book of Romans. We're going to be in Romans 1, verses 18 to 23. But first, just a little bit of context. Look in your Bible at Romans 1, 17. Romans 1, 17, Paul just finished speaking about how he's not ashamed to preach the gospel. And in 17, he says, For in it, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. Do you notice what's being proclaimed? It's not only that God is righteous, but the righteousness that belongs to God is being revealed through the gospel message itself. Then we get to verse 18, which is today's passage. For the wrath of God is revealed. It's not just his righteousness, it's also his wrath because of the gospel. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. Let's talk about the wrath of God for a brief moment. If God is absolutely righteous, holy, and perfect, then he must have an absolute hatred towards sin and towards evil. Because God is righteous, he holds wrath towards anything that is unlike his character. If God is good, then he hates what's in opposition to him being good, that is, anything that's considered evil or sinful. God can never show partiality towards anything that's apart from his character. In other words, God can never sweep anything under the rug for something that's not like himself. If he's holy and good and perfect, then anything that's in opposition to that, he has to do something of it. That is what the wrath of God is all about. The wrath of God does something about evil. It says the wrath of God is revealed from heaven, the place of his authority, against all ungodliness. What is ungodliness? It's sins against God vertically. And unrighteousness. What is unrighteousness? Unrighteousness is sins against men. While God himself is righteous and perfect and even righteous towards men and how he has created mankind, given mankind a purpose, mankind themselves reflect nothing of that nature in their unrighteousness. It speaks of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Uh, that word suppress here is actually in the continual tense. Have you ever been to the ocean and you've ever rented a boogie board? If you were to take that boogie board or maybe that paddle out onto the ocean, you can maybe push it down underneath the surface of the waters for a brief moment, but if you don't hold it down, it resurfaces. In order to suppress something, you have to keep holding it down so that it does not rise to the surface. These ungodly, unrighteous men suppress the truth continually, and the truth is God himself. If they don't continue to suppress God himself, then God always continues to resurface in the hearts and the minds of these individuals. Here's the reason, verse 19, because that which is known about God is evident within them. It's evident within them because... God has made it evident to them. Uh, some people say, I'm an atheist, uh, but actually I don't believe there's any such thing as an atheist. I believe there are people who declare themselves to be atheists, but I don't believe there's any such thing as an atheist in reality because the Bible here says that everybody knows of God's existence. They may have the option or they may have the practice of continuing to suppress the knowledge of God, but you can't suppress something that's not there. You can only suppress something if it is there in existence. The Bible says that evil, ungodly, unrighteous men and women who are unsaved, unredeemed, unregenerate, they have to keep pushing God down because they know he's there. Look in verse 20. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, number one, his eternal power, number two, and divine nature, number three, have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, Here's the purpose clause, so that they are without excuse. All mankind is without excuse. You can look and see the attributes of God based upon his creation. Uh, if you've ever been hiking in the Colorado mountains, you, you know of the majestic mountains, but they're, the majestic mountains are only majestic because there's a majestic creator. Or let's take something even greater. Let's take a man and a woman who come together together. Uh, they come together and they become one flesh, and then they produce children. The fruit of their love is children. Isn't it a miracle? Uh, every single child that, that becomes conceived and then born, 
Isn't it a miracle? All of the different processes that have to take place to perfection. Uh, when you look at an infant, you see that God is a wonderful creator. All around us is organization. And if there's organization all around us, there must be an organizer. And the Bible here says that all people who suppress the truth of God, they're without excuse because you can't look at organization and say there's not an organizer. Just like you can't look at a painting and say there's no painter. When you look at how beautiful God's creation is, the intricacies, the majestic nature, and the organized nature, you have no excuse but to admit there's an organizer, there's a painter, there's a creator. Look in verse 21, for even though they knew God, or at least they knew of God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile, literally dumb in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. In other words, part of the consequence and result of suppressing God continually is that you become dumb and your heart becomes dark. You become dumb and your heart becomes dark. Look in verse 22, professing to be wise. Here's another result or a consequence of suppressing God. They became fools. They became foolish. Verse 23, and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God, this amazing God that should captivate our hearts. They exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. In other words, they turned to idolatry. They started worshiping stones and things that God had made rather than worshiping God himself, the maker. You know, today's devotional speaks of how God is righteous to actively display his wrath from his place of authority in heaven on people currently today. This isn't just reserved for people, you know, at the judgment seat. God's wrath is being shown today. Because they reject God, God's wrath is being shown today. And this is the call of the gospel, to turn and repent, to believe in this righteous God and the saving grace of his son Jesus, to turn and repent of our sins now so that we can escape the wrath of God now and the wrath of God to come. Uh, we continue to see the results of God's wrath as it pertains to mankind in the rest of this chapter, and that's for our next devotional series. Hey, please do us a favor here at Ottawa Bible Church. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you share this video. We pray that it was a blessing to you today. May we look to the righteous God and be unashamed of his gospel. Take care. God bless.